G'day guys, Matty from Drive, and today we're going to be going through basic fault finding on our solar panels. At the moment we've got our 80 watt folding kit out here. What I'm going to show you will go through any solar panel and any size array that you do have. So we've got it wired into our DC-DC 40 plus and then powering our E-Lite battery here. So what we'll do is we'll just go through and actually see what our solar panel here is producing. So I'll press the menu button to see what voltage our 80 watt folding solar panel is operating at. So at the moment it's operating at just over 17 volts. To see what the what current's going into our battery, we'll just let it cycle through its normal process here. And at the moment it's putting in 4.1 amps. So an easy way to see whether your solar panel and what effects shading has on it is I'll put my hand across this panel and you can see that it's pretty much halved what it can do because I'm blocking off half of the array here. So I'll remove my hand and then we'll see it jump back up to 4.1 amps. Easy way if your solar panel's not working, just grab out your multimeter and we'll just do a couple of tests on it. So we'll just test to make sure that we have got voltage at the bottom of the DC-DC and then we'll do a short circuit test on it it's critical that you only do the short circuit test on the solar panels itself. If you do it on anything else, you'll potentially damage other components and stuff like that in the system. So we'll switch our multimeter onto volts DC. And then we'll just put it on the terminals. So on the multimeter and also on the DC DC we're getting the same voltage reading so we know that the voltage is correct and we're not getting any voltage drop between the panel and also the DC DC. So what we're going to go through now is doing our short circuit test on our 80 watt solar panel here. With your bigger arrays and everything like that you always need to isolate your solar panel either by having a blanket over it to, to isolate it or if you do have an isolation point, circuit breaker, fuse, something like that, you need to isolate that, especially for your bigger arrays, you can cause some significant damage to the controller and or the solar array. So what we'll do is we'll just go through now that our panel's isolated, we'll disconnect it and do our short circuit test. So to do a short circuit test, we'll literally just bridge the positive and negative together and hold that. What you'd ideally have is either an Anderson plug that's bridged together or using the MC4 connectors on the back of the panels because we usually do this to test the individual panels. So what we've got here is our clamp meter. I've put it onto amps DC and now I'm just going to zero that one. So now that that's all zeroed, I'll connect it through to our system here. So what we can see here is our panel isn't producing any power, which is what we would suspect because we've got it all isolated. So I'll remove the blanket off of the panel. And at the moment, we're only putting in one amp. That's just because of the weather conditions that we do have at the moment. It's all cloud cover and everything like that going over these panels. So we do know that it isn't the most ideal circumstances to be testing this panel, but we can still see that our panel is working. So I'll disconnect this one. So what I'll do is I'll disconnect this, but before I do any more connections, I need to make sure that I've isolated this panel again, either by a circuit breaker fuse or putting a blanket over that panel. So I'll disconnect that one, leave it away where it's not gonna short onto anything, and I'll put my blanket back over the panel. So there we go, now our panel's isolated, I'll redo my connections. So now my connections are all redone, I'll re-energize the circuit, so either via reconnecting my circuit breakers, fuses, or taking my blanket off. So we'll have a look at our solar, uh, our DC-DC to see what solar's going in. At the moment, we haven't got anything going in just because of the cloud and everything like that. But you saw earlier that we did have current going into this battery. So if you have any more questions on testing or anything like that, 
leave a comment down below. We'll endeavor to answer your questions and like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Cheers, guys. Thank you.